Ah, Mercedes, a name synonymous with motorsport success, multiple F1 World Championships in the 2010s, and being an absolute slaughterhouse for drivers paired up with their star man Lewis Hamilton. From people needing therapists just to compete, to recent events reaching a boiling point at the Japanese Grand Prix, the Silver Arrows have a track record of being a place where the pressure more often breaks the pipes than it makes diamonds, and the recent Japanese Grand Prix showed just how intensely the pressure is building on the number two, the nobody admits is a number two, George Russell. Rumor is, the blue-eyed starboy left waiting in the wings, who seized his opportunity and secure back in 2020, could well be left out in the cold after his recent reactions to what could only be described as a minor altercation with his teammates compared to how it was in the mid-2010s. Want to know what Mercedes thinks of all of this? Also, just how bad has this situation got compared to Hamilton's ex-victims, I mean teammates? Stick around to the end to find out where we think George Russell goes from here, because to be honest, if things don't work out at Mercedes, it could end catastrophically for him. Before we get into all of that, let's take a brief history lesson. Back in 2013, Nicky Lauda pulled yet another masterstroke in a storied career, having previously convinced one Michael Schumacher to join Ferrari. The cockpit Cupid coupled together yet another previous world champion and a soon-to-be dominant force, Hamilton and Mercedes. Even better, Hamilton was to join longtime best friend from the karting days, Nico Rosberg, in what could only be described as a feel-good story for the ages, despite what the pundits at the time were saying, who could just not wrap their heads around why Hamilton had ditched McLaren, the team that had made him, to join a relatively unproven Mercedes. So, they all drove away happily into the sunset, best friends forever, trading titles, and lived happily ever after. Obviously, we both know I'm being facetious, Hamilton and Rosberg proceeded to clash on and off track, boyhood friendships ended and dreams got crushed, with Rosberg finally beating his teammate to the World Championship in 2016, followed by an early retirement and escape from the pressures of F1, as a driver anyway. In recent years, Rosberg has revealed that the only way he could overcome the overwhelming force that was mid-2010's Lewis Hamilton was through extensive therapy and mental fortitude training, with the German world champion having this to say, two hours every second day of mental training, he told Reuters. I just dedicated my whole every single breathing second of my life to winning the next race and becoming the world champion. Lewis drove me to go searching for ways to be better than I ever thought I could be because he's the best of all time, or going towards the best of all time anyway. So of course, to beat him, you need to rise above everything you have. It's the only way to win. He would go on to say how it wasn't even just him that was affected, but his loved ones and those around him too. All of this just to overcome his teammate. Next up was Valtteri Bottas, the ex-Williams man being called up at the last minute due to Rosberg's shock retirement. He achieved a few race wins and a few podiums here and there. Very cool. Next was Bottas 2.0. He wears sunglasses. Next was Bottas 3.0. He eats porridge. And next was Bottas 4, A New Hope. He shows up naked on Netflix. Thinking about it, Mercedes have had a lot of drivers called Valtteri Bottas recently, and they all look remarkably similar to the guy who went through a yearly identity crisis just in an attempt to compete with Hamilton. Despite his team letting slip that he was just a safe bet to be a wingman and was ideal because despite threatening to, he never really rocked the boat all that much. In all seriousness, Valtteri Bottas is a tidy driver and very much deserved, and possibly still deserves, to be at a top team, but he just couldn't keep up with the pressure that mounted at Mercedes, driving him to the aforementioned identity crises and leading to some pretty serious mental health problems which we are very happy to see him move past. So, in steps George Russell, who has something that Hamilton's past teammates and Mercedes didn't have, something special, something beautiful, something the whole media world could get behind, something to finally believe in. He was from England, innit? Obviously, we're joking. The man from King's Lynn, who had gained the moniker of Mr. Saturday due to constantly outperforming the forklift that Williams had provided him for three years, had obvious talent. The whole F1 world had been foaming at the mouth for someone not Dutch or German to finally stand up to Hamilton and make life difficult for him, to actually give him a challenge from within, because if Silver was going to win everything, then maybe, just maybe, the number on the front could be anything other than 44. However, all the buddy-buddy, waxwork, 
figure level smiles and friendship has all recently been blown apart when the two have come to blows on track, with some around the paddock starting to speculate that Russell's dream of being the Mercedes savior could well be slipping through his fingers without truly stepping into competitive machinery. Toto Wolff must have been watching the Japanese Grand Prix behind a pillow, with the Mercedes drivers narrowly avoiding each other on track before fully avoiding each other after the race in the biggest rift between the drivers at Brackley in years. Now don't get us wrong, this isn't the 2016 Catalonia instance by any means, but following on from George breaking under the pressure from Hamilton behind him in Singapore, this really isn't a good look for the compatriot teammates. It truly does seem that after two lackluster years from the team following on from the disappointment at Abu Dhabi in 2021, sorry to bring that up Hamilton fans, the Hamilton of the mid-2010s has been reawakened, which can only spell disaster for his teammate. Indeed, it seems that Hamilton has his sights set on crushing Russell, after two years of doing everything to improve the car behind the scenes while Russell speeds off on the back of his work, Hamilton has had enough. Russell has adopted a my time will come mindset in F1, but with Hamilton's revival and Alonso proving that even fossils can get a podium, George's wait to be top dog in his own team, never mind the sport, may be longer than expected. So what will break first, George's resolve or Hamilton being dissuaded from chasing his record earning championship, which will isolate him as the greatest of all time, pushing through the glass ceilings set by Michael Schumacher, though I'm sure that Damon Hill has something to say about that. What Russell needs is what may isolate him from the fanbase that so adores him, as all dominant drivers have a cutthroat arrogance about them that pushes them clear of their competition, with many drivers in this new generation certainly having the petulance, I mean just listen to their radio messages, but seeming to lack the killer instinct a la Charles Leclerc. It's all been a bit too kind out on the track, with drivers possibly too afraid of the backlash they'll receive online if they start rolling in the mud and fighting dirty. Just look at how the now adored Vettel was treated in his era of dominance. The man was booed while tasting champagne just due to the fact that he was winning so often and by any cost. Multi-21, ASEB. However, it seems like George may not even get the time, with a prominent and somewhat controversial voice in the F1 world suggesting that Mercedes should drop Russell in favor of another F1 rising talent. In a recent interview with the Daily Mail, Bernie Eccleston revealed that he wasn't convinced that Russell could stand up to the pressure that appears to be growing by the race week, even going as far to suggest as to who he would replace Russell with. In his interview with the Daily Mail, the ex-CEO went on to say, I can't make up my mind about him. I like him, he is super talented, it's a matter of what he's prepared to do to win. I don't think he thinks his race through something that Lewis does do. I think I'd get hold of that Australian kid, Oscar Piastri. He's very good, but Max Verstappen is the best that I've ever seen. Oscar is an interesting proposition. It does seem that he doesn't hold team loyalty too highly, though I can't blame him for leaving Alpine, I'd get sick of the smell of burnt out power units too, and he does seem to have the talent and ruthlessness to be a future F1 champion. The Brit partnering Piastri, Norris, is currently tied with Russell for 7th in the championship, in spite of Lewis being leagues ahead in 3rd, possibly 2nd by the end of the season if Perez continues his form, and it's hard to see Norris not being the number 1 at McLaren for years to come, so perhaps Perhaps Piastri would consider moving to another team in order to fill the gap that Lewis leaves behind, whether through winning that final championship or just calling it a day soon after the new regulations come in. But where would this leave George? And if it's not George or Piastri in the second seat, then who? Well, perhaps Toto can finally put his money where his mouth is and give Schumacher that seat. After all, it's everyone else who doesn't believe in him and won't give him a chance, right Toto? To be fair, as long as he can keep it on the road and not top the destruction Constructors Championship, then we could see Mick being the perfect Bottas replacement that Mercedes wanted in the first place. Submissive and happy to be there to support the main driver in Hamilton. For George, we can't really see him moving anywhere further down the grid. Casting himself back to the shadow realm of Williams seems unthinkable after escaping it after many years of waiting. The only two teams we can see being viable for him are Aston Martin after they open up Alonso's race suit in 2050 to discover a skeleton has been driving the car for the past four seasons or perhaps even Ferrari, when Carlos Sainz gets the number one drive he deserves elsewhere and can finally stop being his own race day engineer and focus on what he does best. We can't see George falling out of the sport, but what he needs to prove is a killer instinct and a strength of character that so far has
has not been seen in the Brits since Sakir, and that feels like a lifetime ago. One thing is for sure, if nothing is done within the team to address this conflict or create a hierarchy sooner rather than later, sparks will fly, egos will be crushed, and George will have to dye his hair blonde to complete the perfect Nico Rosberg cosplay that he is trying so hard to wear at the moment. In the meantime, we'll be here with our popcorn waiting for the inevitable. Feel free to like this video if you enjoyed, and subscribe to join us as we bring you new updates of the situation as it unfolds. Thank you for watching.